Hi, welcome. I'm Sibren. I'm the founder of Sibitanica and your soil expert of today. Today we're going to talk about the beautiful sphagnum moss. Uh, we're going to show you a few ways to use sphagnum moss, show you the different types, uh, tell you how to store it, give you some tips and even tell you something about the history of this moss. So let's get started. So sphagnum moss has some unique characteristics. Uh, so one of the reasons people love it so much is that it has a really fluffy and a unique texture. Uh, it retains moisture very well, while still due to its structure allowing lots of airflow to move through the moss. Uh, that's why it's really commonly used for cuttings. So there's actually uh, quite a few different types of sphagnum moss. Uh, today we have these two here, uh, which is live sphagnum moss and we have dried sphagnum moss. Uh, as you can see, the live moss uh, still has some parts of green in it and is actually freshly harvested uh, from the peat box and then uh, yeah, shipped directly. Uh, so this is the dried version, uh, which is a lot more crunchy in texture. Um, and you can see that there's almost no green left in it. And when it's actually fully dry, as this is not fully dry yet, it will be completely shade of brown and yellow. There's also pressed sphagnum moss. This is usually moss that is imported from overseas, from countries like Chile. Uh, and this stuff is pressed down into blocks, uh, which you then rehydrate and it becomes fluffy and big again. Uh, the reason they do this is to cut on transportation costs. So today we're going to show you five ways how to use sphagnum moss. <music> First, I'm going to show you how to uh, propagate plants with cuttings uh, using sphagnum moss. So first, let's get this out of the way. So to propagate cuttings, we're going to need a few different things. So what you simply do is you place some of the moss in your pot like that, and then you simply get your cutting. Uh, the scandopsis in this case, uh, and place it in. Uh, so it's important for this type of plant to make sure that uh, at least one of the nodes is fully covered in the sphagnum. Uh, what's really important for cuttings like this, especially uh, scandopsis like this, is that you keep it uh, adequately moist. Uh, so the biggest risk is that the plant will dry out before shooting any new roots. Uh, if you're like me and you forget to water often, I would definitely recommend getting it in a Tupperware container or some type of container that is closed off. Uh, if you don't have that or want to do it this way, then make sure to spray the sphagnum moss uh, every time it gets slightly dry. So now we're going to propagate uh, the string of hearts. Uh, as always, I recommend to experiment and see what works best for you. Uh, it also differs from plant to plant. Uh, we actually have a full video on propagation, different mediums and tips uh, coming up. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for that. All right, now I'm going to show you how you can incorporate sphagnum moss into building a terrarium. So as an example, we have a container. Uh, and what we recommend is you place a layer of clay balls and then you put a layer of sphagnum moss on top to prevent any from the activated carbon and substrate that you would later put in to fall into the drainage layer. So here we have some clay balls. Uh, so a great uh, measurement to use is get about one to two centimeter layer of the clay balls. Uh, this way you have enough uh, place for the water to go uh, but it's also not too big where you take up too much space in your terrarium. Make sure that uh, when you look at the terrarium from the top that you cannot see the clay balls anymore and that way you're certain that there's a great layer in between them. 
so the next steps would be to place some activated carbon in there and some soil. Uh, we actually have uh, a whole video going in depth about this, so I recommend checking it out. The link will be down in the description. So now we're going to make some mass poles. There's actually quite a few different ways to make mass poles, different materials to use. Uh, you have like these coco choir ones uh, over here. Uh, but today we're going to make one from Specno Mass. Uh, so the big uh, advantage of making one like this is that you can water it from the top uh, and uh, the mass will get wet. So the uh, roots or the aerial roots that uh, attach onto the mass pole can actually also get some moisture from the, from the mass pole, which actually improves the growth rate. What we need is some garden fence and some tie wraps. These are both available at nearby hardware stores. Uh, we also need some specknum mass. Uh, so to start off, you really want to decide uh, how big you want it. Uh, today we're going to go the easy mode and we're going to make it as big as uh, this is high. I'm going to start by bending it over and then I'm simply going to cut it. Now what you want to do is you want to fill it up with specknum mass. Uh, make sure it's nice and tight and then we're going to wrap it up. So let's get the specknum mass. So we have one of our large nets here. We're simply going to take the mass and put it inside. So now that we've filled up our pole with mass, we're going to get this out of the way and we're going to roll it up like a burrito. Next step, take your tie wraps and we're going to tie it up. So now that we've tidied up our pole, um, yeah, we can do the last finishing touches. So you can get the specknum mass out from the sides and you can put some mass at the top as some has fallen out. And then we're basically good to go. So here we have our specknum mass pole ready to use. Another way to use specknum mass is to enhance the properties of your soil mix, which is what we specialize in. I have prepared some ingredients here uh, for demonstration purposes um, and we're going to mix it together. One of the main reasons you would want to use specknum mass is to uh, create both moisture retention uh, and air holes into the soil. Uh, so due to the structure of the specknum mass, uh, it will create little air holes. Uh, which will allow uh, the roots of the plant to get more oxygen. It will also keep the soil wet for much longer. One of the hard parts with mixing in specknum mass is that it stays clumped. Uh, so the best way to tackle this is to pull the strings apart a bit, uh, not too much because then you obviously don't have the effects of the uh, texture. Make sure you mix it in nice and well. And there we have some beautiful soil mix. So we use Pagna Mass actually in three of our mixes. So we have the orchid mix over here, uh, but we also use it in our terrarium mix uh, and even in our carnivorous mix, which is the mix I made over here. Next up is we're gonna make a Kokodama ball, which is a Japanese uh, form of art in which you can plant a plant uh, in a little moss ball, suspended in the air. What we need. Let's start. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna unpot the plant. And you wanna make sure you get as much of the old soil off as possible. So we're just gonna get a little bit of soil. Now we wanna get some water. So now the soil is wet and ready. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it a little flat like this. We're gonna take the plants by the roots. 
and we're going to place them inside of the strip we just laid out and we're going to try to form the soil around it so we get this nice ball shape that we're looking for. So now we're going to get our rope and our moss and what we're going to do is we're going to start off by getting a little bit of rope around our newly formed ball and we're going to place some moss around the ball. And we're good to go. Uh, so what you can now still do is uh, tie another rope around it and make a little cord so it goes up and you could hang it somewhere. Um, but you could also place it like this. So where does sphagnum moss come from? That's a great question. Sphagnum moss grows in peat bogs, uh, which actually occupy about 3% of the world surface area, of the land surface area. Uh, most of the sphagnum moss fields are currently being used and harvested for the production of peat, which is basically composted down sphagnum moss, which is used for lots of uh, reasons, but mostly for soil. Uh, using this peat long term really isn't sustainable. Uh, you could look at peat box as like a CO2 storage. So what happens is that the, the peat, uh, which is basically another word for sphagnum in a different life stage, uh, it keeps growing and growing and sucks up a lot of carbon. Uh, but when you actually harvest it, you not only remove uh, uh, the carbon sink, it actually lets a lot of CO2 back into the air. So now you might think uh, you're telling us that peat and sphagnum is bad to use. Why are you still using it? Great question. Uh, so there's different ways to harvest sphagnum moss. Uh, our moss comes from the Netherlands, uh, where it's farmed on a regular schedule, where we only harvest the top layer. Uh, and we actually don't harvest in a lot of times to make sure the sphagnum moss can regrow. So, uh, we get a lot of questions from you uh, about how to store the sphagnum moss. Uh, so there's actually a few different ways you can approach it. Uh, the first question you should ask yourself uh, is, do I want the moss to stay a bit green or do you just want to store it away for a long period of time? So if it's the first situation, what you do is you grab either a bag or a Tupperware box or any sort of see-through container uh, in which you can simply put the live moss as is like this, and then you make sure you store it uh, in light, but out of direct sunlight. Uh, so don't place it directly in the windowsill, but maybe have it laying uh, on top of a shelf or uh, in a storage room somewhere, but make sure uh, there's still some light coming in to maintain the green color. Also make sure it's closed off uh, so it can keep its moisture and keep the green color. Uh, so that's option one. Uh, option two, if you want to store it for a long period of time, uh, we would recommend to dry it out like this. Uh, and then you can uh, put it in any sort of bag, container, uh, whatever. As long uh, as there doesn't come any direct light on it, it will stay good for a very, very long time. If you then want to reuse the sphagnum moss, uh, you can simply uh, hydrate it and it will be back to its fluffy old self. Wrapping up, we've built a moss pole, a kokodama ball, we made some cuttings, we built some drainage layers for a terrarium, and we even made our own soil mix. Uh, I hope you guys liked the video. If you have any ideas about how we could use the sphagnum moss in different ways, definitely let us know down below. Uh, I will be personally responding to other comments you guys make. Uh, if you would like to purchase some of the moss yourself, you can head over to our website, sibotanica.com. Bye.